The iconic Chicago Theater sign, vertical letters glaring red, can be seen blocks from the theater's North State Street location. Built in 1921, the theater was a palace for entertainment and film. Designed by architects Rapp and Rapp and commissioned by Theater Corporation, Balaban and Katz. A 1928 article in the Balaban and Katz magazine wrote, If ever a theater was rightly named, it is this Chicago theater. For in dignity, character of entertainment, constant leadership, and progressiveness, the theater expresses the spirit of the city whose name it bears. This is the story of the Chicago theater. A story of luxury, of new and old, is a story of a theater that, in its essence, embodies the city it is placed in. The grandeur in the theater's neo-baroque French revival design matched the grandeur and excesses of the 1920s in America. It was one of the first movie palaces of its kind, a brand of theater that differed from the small Nickelodeons of past decades. It was similar to other theaters of the 20s. The vertical marquee appears in theaters around the city and around the country. But the Chicago Theater was cited as the epitome of movie palaces. It was a palace for Chicago. The Chicago Theater features a white terracotta exterior with floral details. There are several arches, but the largest arch on the facade is reminiscent of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. A stained glass window created by Tiffany sits in the middle of the arch and features the Balaban and Katz logo, a modern touch representing the marrying of new and old. On either side of the arch lie traditional Greek and Roman masks of tragedy and comedy. These, an ode to ancient theater, seem to establish the Chicago theater as legitimate and replicate Roman theaters that were commonly decorated with these masks. In 1925, one of the Rapp brothers, George, reminisced on the fantastical nature of their movie palaces. He said, Watch the eyes of a child as it enters the portals of our great theaters and treads the pathway into fairyland. In the auditorium, painter Louis Grell initially painted scenes of the French fairy tales, but added new murals in 1933 for Chicago Century of Progress World's Fair. This change, to murals depicting ancient gods and goddesses, was allegedly meant to make the murals more recognizable for the international fair audience. While most of the Roman influences in the theater are filtered through imperial French references, the mythological murals defy that mediation through France and are instead a direct dialogue with ancient Rome. The murals include Minerva, goddess of wisdom, Calliope, muse of poetry, and Dionysus, god of theater. The mural of Apollo, god of music, takes center stage almost literally. The 45 by 15 foot painting on the proscenium arch depicts Apollo holding a lyre. The Century of Progress Fair, while obviously focused on the growth and forward progress of America, had distinct ancient features. In another Grell painting for the fair, the central figure, Chicago, is displayed as clearly classical. Thus, the reflection on the ancient past is somehow representative of prosperity and progress. The Chicago Theater was an icon for Chicago from its inception. In the Chicago Tribune's review of the theater's opening night, the paper's critic said the theater set a world's record for its splendor. When the theater was slated to be demolished in 1984, after a period of financial troubles, community members fought back. One wrote into the Tribune, noting that if the theater died, piece of Chicago would die too. In 1986, the theater reopened after a restoration. The city welcomed back its icon and its palace. The theater's blending of the present and the past to create a unique identity makes the city more than the new Paris or the new Rome, but something entirely different, Chicago.